e ma le ni beyen o ni le loko esiku dede asiko yi hello everyone it's adiroke again i hope you're doing going well today i'd like to readdress these words that i presented as the lyric for yami leodu yesterday a few things have changed i have received some feedback <laughs> and uh, i also had an epiphany so i'd like to address these i suppose i'd like to discuss it further so the first thing that i got right away from the comment section was that it is odu the first line is yami leodu and the second is yami leodu I assume the person is Afro-Cuban and they mentioned that saying oro as opposed to odo while oro makes sense saying oro here is just a bad habit that what was passed on so I don't disagree that as a matter of fact it could have been odo odo yes oro makes sense and the rest of the lyrics supports oro been there i don't disagree at all that it, it might be odo with lukumi some things change the consonants especially so the g what is written like a j in yoruba becomes yi so rather than ibeji you have ibei with words like lade koju Lade koju. Sometimes you hear lare koyu, lare koyu ye ye. Sometimes you hear. There are some older singers that have the pronounced D, with Baba Lazaro. It says lade koyu ye. You you hear the D, but the G is obviously replaced with ye. You know so. But apart from that, it's really easy to understand everything he says. Everything um, Baba Lazaro says in his songs, it's very clear. It's just those consonants, you know, but he says the D properly. However, in newer songs, especially the ones that were performed from like 2010 until now, the D is becoming less pronounced. So. I don't disagree at all that it might have been Odo Odo. What I did when I was trying to determine, and, and I actually gave that some thoughts when I was doing the video drafting, was is it possible that this is Odo Odo twice? And I believe I mentioned it in the previous video as well. I searched for old recordings of the song, and it seemed like there was no recording older than this one from 1957 that smithsonian has a the copyright of so 1957 was the earliest that i could find and i was thinking okay that's like 60 something years before now 64 65 or 66 maybe 65 because i don't know the i don't know the this was the upload day i don't know the exact month that it was sung so let's assume that the recording is 65 years old even older than the structure of nigeria the formal country nigeria the singers were not a bunch of one year olds or 10 year olds they sound older much older than 40 50 but let's even assume that a bunch of 20 year olds were in the recordings what they have in their minds is now 85 years old you know them saying oro because oro was what they saw in the recording we're looking at 85 years before now what they thought it was so that was what kind of why i kept it in that was my just to give you a background of why i decided to go with oro that was my thought process but i don't disagree at all about the re becoming 
being replaced with D and D becoming less pronounced in songs. I don't disagree at all. I've heard that myself. So it's really some, I guess the people, real people who have a say is the Afro-Cubans is, you know, that's why I didn't agree at all. I didn't uh, disagree at all. I completely agree that it's possible. So uh, let's say the first line is Odo and the second line is Odo. I had an epiphany <laughs> around here. So I kept thinking about it. You know, and at some point, I just kept hearing Iemisha Lamawu. Iemisha Lamawu is different from Iemisha Lamawu. And this is another possible meaning. This is another possible uh, lyric part of the song. You know, it's either this or this. I kept thinking. And I couldn't get it out of my head until maybe like 3 a.m. or 4 a.m. today. I just kept thinking, you know, and I was not too pleased because if I had remembered that or if that had come to me, if I had received that this time yesterday, <laughs> then I wouldn't have made that video. I wouldn't have completed the recording. But anyway, uh, or uh, sorry, Iemisha Lamawu or Iemisha Lamawu. In the video, I explained what Iemisha Lamawu is in the previous one, which I would really <laughs> like you to watch. I explained what Iemisha Lamawu is and uh, I gave its meaning. I did the word for word translation and I explain what it is i give a summary of what that is my mother is of course or undoubtedly the one who knows the esoteric and that is grounded in one of osho's nicknames being amawumaru and i explained the possible meanings for amawumaru regarding you know being reserved or i don't want to use the word secretive but reserved you know in what they share either that or them receiving things without necessarily having to think about it so them being intuitive you know so it's either this or this or both and i said that in yoruba words are placed a certain way so that you can think of them both this is for those who have watched that video if you haven't this part may not make sense to you so i grounded iemisha lamawu in or should be referred to as Amawumaru. However, if we assume that, because it, with the musical theme, it's hard to tell, it could be both. Sounds very similar to. They sound exactly the same. If I was to say those, those two statements musically, Iyemisha Lamawu, Iemisha Lamawu. Iemisha Lamawu. Iemisha la. They, they sound exactly the same. I don't know how to differentiate between them musically. That's why I'm thinking of this as well. I wish I thought about this earlier. So, Iye is mother. You know, Iye, Mama, Ye Ye. All these have diverse meanings, of course. They have their own individual meanings. But if we're looking for an English word that we could replace them with, of course, we will go with mother. However, the word mother does not carry the depth that each of those words carry. And I've done iya in the near future. I'm going to do ye ye specifically and iye specifically just so that you can see what these words mean in and of themselves in relation to whoever we refer to as a maternal figure. Iye mother, me, my, sha, for, or for sure, or of course, or undoubtedly, I mentioned it yesterday, la, the first la is ni, a, ni, a, ni here is is, a is the one we, <laughs> the one is implied, but we, the one we, a is will, a lo, we will go. You know, so ah, uh, the one we 
I will. Ma continue to. It just ma being here makes it a present continuous tense. Make makes the entire statement present continuous in form. Wo is to look at or to look to, which is different from wa, which is to look for. But wo is to look at or to look to. And then the OA are just emphatic ad libs. They're just emphatic ad libs. So, Iemisha la ma wu. If we examine the meaning of that, my mother is, of course, or undoubtedly, the one we will look to. And, of course, while it's not specified in Yoruba, when you don't specify like that, you're being forced to think about. Okay, what would I look to this person for? And of course, we know the attributes of Oshu as her being a healer and a blesser and a helper in emotional and physical and spiritual affairs. So considering the situation as well, considering what they were experiencing as well, it makes sense. Well, what we are still experiencing really, because right now the world is a mess but being particular to their own situation these are ancestors in these foreign lands my mother is of course or undoubtedly the one we will look to makes perfect sense as well it makes perfect sense and it sounds applicable to the situation and it sounds fitting for the rest of the song so really it could be either of the two if it was Iemisha Lamawu, and we would need a historian to tell us more about the recording is there by that the 1957 audio recording is there by the Cuban journalists that you know created them, but I don't maybe I just don't maybe it's because I'm not that good with Spanish. I can't really find any written recordings that, as at 1957, address the meaning of the meanings of those words. If I can find something, I found some research papers, but they seem closer to now than to then. If I can find something really, really old uh, that is at least from the 1950s, you know, that can address those lyrics or that address those lyrics and what they mean perhaps i can then compare with what i have but sounds just as fitting as so it really depends on <laughs> you would sing both the same way so it really depends on you know direct descendants or historians to tell us what it actually is but both are possibilities because the the words are being sung, it's really hard to tell. And uh, <laughs> I came across another rendition. Although newer, it sounds like the person was saying, Iye mi shalama bo. Actually, they didn't say bo. It sounded like, Iye mi shalama bo. Eh. You know, I heard something like that in another recording. So... <laughs> At this point, it could be anything, really. Um, if you replace bo, if you replace uh, wo with bo, because the rest of the words are the same, bo is to honor or reverence or worship. And the word wo uh, worship makes me uncomfortable because of the re other religious associations that it has. But when I looked at the word in and of itself, then worth ship then you know then that makes it more neutral of course once you think of the words history of course there's a way that it has been used but hana and worship seem like satisfactory not excellent but satisfactory translations of the word bo so my mother is of course or undoubtedly the one we will continue to honor or worship and that means Oshun's position as an energy that deserved and will continue to deserve honor is being established. That position is being established, it's being verbally established 
that Osho is in fact worthy of our honor and worthy of our worship and our respect. So <laughs> it could be a simple mistake on the person's part, the, the person from whom I heard, it could just be that they didn't know the words and they came up with feelers but if you are certain of what they, they're saying or they've heard it for decades or it, it has been passed on to them for decades and they're sure that boy is in fact what it is then this is what it would be so these are the three possibilities these are this seem like the only three likely possibilities that we have and so i i don't know <laughs> but it could be one of these three we need historians that even if it's somebody that is older maybe somebody that is a 70 year old or some we need somebody that can clarify for us if if somebody can ask you know that would be lovely but these are the three based on the renditions and this is a newer rendition like i said it may not be applicable it may just be that the person created a feather and now i'm thinking of of that as being like a legit part of the lyric but i know that if i know that I've heard a lot of recordings that sound like the first two. So <laughs> if you're pissed off, you and me both. <laughs> because now I'm trying to figure out, okay, now I'm going to be obsessed. I know for sure that I'm going to be obsessed with trying to find which of these three it is. So you and me both. So the third thing was somebody was a bit displeased. Somebody else was a bit displeased with my translation of this. So they, this was how I explained yesterday that, of course, the four words that are here are Iya, Mi, Ile, Odu. My, my mother, house, river. And that in Yoruba, when prepositions are not added like that, you have to put a filler. So at that point, it's either off or from or in depending on the situation you put the right preposition that was why i put off here so my mother of the home of the river my mother of the house of the river was what i said yesterday let me just stick to that and i said it's a nod to osho's strong presence as a deity that works with and manifests in water you know but i was told that uh, it's more accurately my mother whose house is the river or my mother who lives in the house of the river that it's either but that my mother of the house of the river doesn't really you know say anything which you know isn't wrong if we decide that our filler preposition is in if i say yeah me and i give the example nigeria yesterday if i if i say yeah me louisiana you know or something yeah me louisiana if yami leodu yami louisiana i might be saying my mother of louisiana i might be saying my mother from mofelo ba or mofelo ki yami louisiana i want to go and greet go and salute my mother of louisiana or my mother from louisiana or my mother in it's in cases like this you feel it with you include the preposition in of or from because it's not specified but i don't disagree at all that if we you know take in to be the feeler here my mother in the ass of the river seems similar to my mother whose house is the river my mother in the ass of the river or my mother of the ass of the river it's not really it's not really that far from my mother whose house is the river or my mother who lives in the house of the river who lives in my mother in my mother who lives in 
it's not wrong like you could translate it that way as well it's just a matter of tra- translation you know iyami oni le odu iyami to ni le odu iyami to ngbe le odu this would also express my mother whose house is the river my actually iyami oni le odu would be like my mother whose house is the river it would be closer to expressing that ownership that the person wanted me to express you know iyami to ni le odu my mother who owns the house of the river whose house is the river at that one expresses ownership even but much better iyami to ngbe le odu my mother who lives in the house of the river you know that also express ex, uh, that also expresses um the who lives in but because they are just four words and no preposition and yeah me ile odu i'm just kind of sticking with the grammar here i don't disagree at all that my mother whose house is the river or my mother who lives in the house of the river sounds better maybe it gives you bit more detail regarding you know the sense of ownership and or she owning the river and you know but if we're just looking at these four words and nothing else and not inferring anything then we can infer of course we can infer in translation but maybe because i like to transliterate <laughs> that's my problem i like to look at words word for word my mother in or off or from the house of the river is really what this is in alignment with your back grammar so this is a is a good one to my mother in the house of the river my mother off i said off you know i don't even think in sounds like as great as off i said off in the previous video my mother off the house of the river but if you want to express that ownership in translation of course you can and if you want to express it even further you can use any of these three options you know the last thing that somebody called me up for was um that there's a major difference between a house and a home in my translations i translated transliterated ile has house but they were saying that there's no physical structure in the river and so it's home not house and i don't disagree at all i don't disagree i don't disagree and it's not the first time that i've heard something like that that you know one should be careful without the use house and home because home is you know definitely especially for writers is a lot more endearing than uh, i'm going to my house in writing i'm going to my house is definitely more powerful uh is definitely not as powerful as i'm going home you know <laughs> if a, a, a person who is not really interested in literature may just they go okay so <laughs> at least they're going somewhere but a person who is would be able to tell the differences in the, in the effect so yeah i completely agree that aside even just looking at the facts it's not that there's a physical mansion or you know physical duplex that Oshun lives in in the river next to my house <laughs> um it's her being at home in water in rivers so yeah that makes sense however i would just like to mention that the word ile in and of itself doesn't really have anything to do with house or home or mansion or duplex or any other meaning that we can align the word ile is a combination of the noun maker e and the verb le typically we would had <laughs> if you watch my videos frequently you may already know what i'm saying how yoruba words are formed you your bad nouns are typically formed you had a noun maker to a verb and then you have a noun it's not the first time that i'm mentioning it 
So this is the noun maker. This is the verb. Le is to is to stack, is to heap. You know, what do you say to pile? Is to stack or to to heap. So looking at how millenniums ago our houses used to look like in the days of the you know of the umole of the imale this was how the our structures were very similar to these you know and they would have some marimu in there and they would they look like hips don't they like you hip there are some words that are so whole that if you don't know what life was like back then it may be hard to translate because you might be thinking heap stack what a, what what is this person talking about? We use the word lay now still for eep. I want to stack my my wares, my products. You know, typically sellers will say that. I want to, there's a way that they will stack the items that they have for sale. Even if it is food, there's a way that they will heap the gari or the elubo or the, you know, whatever. The food to look like a heap like this so knowing that this was how our houses used to look like at some point you know until they started to look like and i'm glad that we have like all these fronts here and all this you know how houses somebody should do the history of our buildings you know and then we started to have um uh, of course clay structures that look like this and but the word is really old the word ile is millenniums old so of course they would have been using the word even back when our house our houses used to look like the previous slide so then we started doing clay structures like that look like this and then we moved to houses that look like this and our houses have taken on so many designs and and then at some point in the late 80s and 90s we started especially in lagos we started um the the descendants of our ancestors that were taken to brazil that came back the brazilian returnees they had a building structure that we also started to copy after a while so there are lots of brazilian building type structures in lagos you know some are now almost falling apart because they are that old but you can still see that design in many others and the, and some others are not they're still as strong as ever so i guess it's a maintenance issue at that point so but anyway our houses the way that our houses have looked like over the decades and centuries and millenniums is worthy of study so what am i saying in essence le you know, so ile would be so and i'm going to maybe make a separate video for this but ile would be the thing that is stacked you know the thing that is stacked or hipped or that looks stacked or looks hipped and that may just be a simple reference to the to the structure so as far as like okay a home is where a person a person feels at home and or she feels at home in the river and you should have said home not house i don't disagree but the word ile itself has nothing much to do with comfortability or you know coziness le as an adjective could also be to increase you know so and that wouldn't be a wrong i will address it when i make the video on ile um of course you know the house people who live in a house tend to increase or maybe houses tend to increase the number of people that live in it or you know a house is always calling for for people else those who are there will feel the one person who is there will feel lonely or you know when a man builds a house and he has a wife and then he has children and they keep increasing like there's a way to look at that esoterically but just thinking with like the you know the word for word 
the syllable for syllable thing the verb the central verb in the word it doesn't really have anything to do with comfortability or coziness so that's another thing to note i suppose so but i don't disagree at all that home definitely sounds better since there's no physical building anywhere in the rivers next to us so yami ileodu so yeah, I, I think I just did a correction here. My mother of the home of the river. My mother whose home is the river. So if we're looking at these new things and we're putting them into consideration, Osho is addressed as a motherly energy who works with and is at home in water. You know, that she's powerful, that she's helpful and accessible. Iye misha la we're looking at if we look at Iye Misha Lama Bo, then we can say she's worthy of honor. I'm sorry, I didn't have it here, but worthy of honor, you know. So, <laughs> these are just the possibilities, anyway. It's really up to <laughs> we can even discuss it further in the comment section. It's really up to us to determine what is likely and what is not. So i'd like to receive some feedback regarding this one as well let me know what you think but yeah if you have any questions please don't hesitate to ask <laughs> at this point if i have any questions i would not hesitate to ask because i'm just as confused as you are regarding especially with the one that has like another possibility the yemisha lama wu versus yemisha lama wu i have a question so <laughs> But let me know what you think. Um, thank you for your time and I'll see you in the next one. Enjoy the rest of your day and bye for now. Akwiro ro bi eni sun o ba bi ni akwiro ro bi eni sun o ba o de je sa to kuro bi a lo bi ga je fora mu bi a lo mu ide lo we iji o ide lefe e ye mi la de ko ju e bora ti gbe nu o mi iya mi e iji ti mo ti mo mo re ti ye o so mo fi ta le je mi o la de ko ju o la de ko ju o se nke se da ko mo pon mi da sinu mi to mo to mo o sun o leje ida mi lohun wo mo o n pe si po sun ba n ta won ni ba nje won wa ni tale ni nja won wa ma ka ni wa ma ka so o so ma